Hi, this is Larry Jordan. This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on repairing audio in Adobe Audition CS 5.5. This time, let's select our sequence. As I said before, I like sending sequences out of the browser because I found it to be more reliable. So we'll select this, go up to File, Export, Audio to OMF. OMF is audio only. doesn't do any video export at all. We'll select it. 4816 is the appropriate choice. Handle length is additional video before the in and out of the clip that's in the timeline. If you've added crossfades, as I have here at the end, it will automatically export those, whether they're 0 dB or plus 3 dB. You can have it include levels and include pan, but they are off by default. There's two schools of thought. You've gone to some time and effort to, to rough in your audio settings for Final Cut. You might want to have those audio settings go across to Audition. However, Final Cut sets all of its pan and volume settings by clip, whereas Audition sets all of its pan and volume settings by track. Track is much more flexible, much more powerful. My recommendation is include the transitions. Don't include levels and don't include pan. This is personal preference, but based on my experience in mixing, I always will erase any volume setting set by the video editor whenever I'm doing a mix because I don't want them to screw up what I'm doing in the audio software. So in this case, we'll say OK, save it to the desktop, call it the same thing, OMF extension. The next step is to output a movie. To do that, we go up to File, go to Export. You can export a QuickTime movie if um, if you've got something which is fairly easy to play, but if you're working with an MPEG-2 file like HDV or XDCAM or an MPEG-4 file like H.264, you'll probably be better off using QuickTime conversion and converting it into a QuickTime movie, but convert it into something that is easier to play back, not H.264, but say DVNTSC or DVPAL, because your goal is simply to have a reference picture. You're not looking for high quality. DV plays back extremely easily inside any audio software, which allows more the processor to worry about audio than to worry about video. And we set that in settings, and we would set that to DVNTSC. There's DVC Pro or DVNTSC. Set it to something that's small and matches the frame size of your image, and click Export. In my case, to save us some time, I've already done that. Let's go back to Audition. This time, we'll go up to File, go down to Import. Any time that we're bringing a file in, it's always imported. The only thing that you open is an Audition project. So we'll import file, keyboard shortcut, command I. There's the OMF file. Click open. Now with OMF, unlike XML, Audition needs to create a whole bunch of reference files, technical files. And so I created a folder called audio files. You could call it Fred or or David or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't make any difference. I'm just giving it a folder so it can store all this somewhere and say go to. And it now creates all those temporary files listed here. And there's my mix. To make my mix bigger, click the plus key and notice how the vertical height expands. Or to make it smaller, click the minus. If you want to zoom in, click the zoom in button. Same thing as typing the equals sign. Equals zooms in. Or zoom out by clicking the zoom out button or type the minus sign and you'll zoom out. This is a global zoom. This is the same thing as shift Z. Click it and it automatically has the entire sequence fit inside the window. We could do the same thing up here. This is the Fit to Window button. So it exists in two places, in the top right next to the global view and with the zoom controls down here in the low right corner. This is the global view. This allows us to see all the tracks from the very beginning to the very end. A very cool feature is to grab this gold bar and drag it. The gold bar allows us to zoom in or zoom out on our timeline. If I'm zoomed in, I can simply grab between those two vertical gold bars and drag back and forth to be able to display different parts of my sequence. And if we can grab this and zoom back out again or control the part that we zoom back out again. Or if we're zoomed really, really far in, click this button and it automatically fits everything back in the window. It isn't really appropriate to this session, but this is very cool. If I select a clip and right mouse click on it, we can assign a clip color to it. 
we've got this wonderful palette of cheesy colors that we can work with. Isn't this neat? So I could make this a nice purple color and click OK. And I've now colored that particular clip. Say I wanted to do some repairs to it or simply flag it for no other reason. This is an OMF file. Came in beautifully. Everything is fine. Had to create a couple temporary files, but that wasn't hard. Just needed to assign a folder to it. But there's no picture. How do I import a file? You would never guess. This is so hard. Go up to File. Go down to... <laughs> Import and select Import File. In this case, I'm going to go inside this folder, and there's the romance movie that I created, and click Open. We go down here to our Files tab, and we find our romance movie. Now, I'm going to do this wrong just to show you how, how this gets fixed. See the playhead here? If I grab the playhead, I can drag back and forth. I'm going to put the playhead right there. With the romance movie highlighted, I could either click this button, which inserts it into a multi-track project, or right mouse click. Just to make the text easier to read, I'm going to right mouse click. It says insert, insert into multi-track. I could either create a brand new multi-track session or insert it into the current session. Now look at the position of the playhead halfway across the timeline in two, one, woof. It automatically inserts the movie at the position of the playhead and everything is completely and hopelessly out of sync. Oh, How do we fix it? You grab the clip and you drag it all the way to the left. And now when you play it, it was not what you deserved. It was all that I have in me. Everything is back in sync. And because I switched my workspace to edit audio to video, I'm able to see my picture, keep track of my files, and see the history, the list of what I've done to this particular project. And look at this. Look at these huge sound meters, audio meters. To provide. Look at that. Big enough that you can actually see what your levels are. <laughs> oh, I get so excited about the small stuff. How do we get this back to a Final Cut? Well, in this case, you go File, Export, a multi-track mix down of the entire session. This is now going to create a mix, give it a name, give it a location. By default, Audition likes to work with Waves because its origin was on the PC, and Wave is the default audio standard of the PC. The Macintosh prefers AIF. From an audio quality point of view, AIFs and Waves are indistinguishable from each other. I prefer AIFs because the Mac likes them, but Final Cut and every Mac application can work with AIF or Wave, so select whichever is appropriate. Waves will output faster. We want to output this at 4816. If we need to change that, we click the Change button. We can set the sample rate. We can say whether it's mono, stereo, or surround, and we can indicate the bit depth. General recommendation, 48K sample rate, stereo, 16-bit are all the best choices. Let me go change this to the desktop and click OK. After a few seconds, it outputs it. Hide this. Go up to Final Cut. Go down to File. Import the file and bring in our soundtrack and we'll just drag that soundtrack down to the bottom of the project turn off the green visibility lights and our mix is complete beautiful thing final cut piece of cake works exactly the same as pro tools send it as an omf file export a separate movie do your mix and audition bring it back as a stereo pair and you're done so from a operational point of view, we've been doing this for 10 years with Pro Tools. Now we can do the exact same workflow in Final Cut with Audition. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz store.